So my question is, what's the win? Remember, remember at the top of the show, I, I asked you to ask yourself as we're going through this tonight, why? Why hold this press conference, make these accusations after such an successful, successful event on Friday? And I guess now the question you want to ask yourself after just hearing that is, so, so what, what exactly is the win? Now, it could be a myriad of things, but when he says, hey, we're, we're going to win, win what specifically? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you to think about it. All right, here's part three of the presser from earlier today. On May 30th, the actions and inactions of local law enforcement almost led to the loss of life and the subsequent riot that followed. At this time, we are requesting the immediate release and dismissal of charges for all officers. We have information that shows the Fargo Police Department engaged in an illegal black ops mission against community activists and its citizens. The truth will be set free, will not be set free when the police investigate themselves. Currently, the person responsible for the internal affairs review of the former deputy chief answers to Chief Todd himself, who we believe received direct intel throughout the night from former deputy chief Osmondson. It is our belief that the chief may have even gone as far as calling Deputy Chief Osmondson at midnight to ad advise him that he could go home and relieve him of his duty despite being in plain clothes and completely concealed with a mask, sunglasses, and a hat. We are working diligently to get answers. We will share the information as we do. It is our belief that an independent body should take over the internal affairs investigation it is our belief that this process has to be transparent and shared with a community yearning for change. Lady Justice is marching in the streets. She has made her way to Fargo. At this time, we will not be taking any questions due to the sensitive nature of this matter. Thank you for your time. So we talked about a black ops mission. In my book, that's a pretty major accusation against a local police department. Keep that in mind. Again, ask yourself, why would they want all the charges dropped against the rioters? As I mentioned just a moment ago, remember, there was a person that they arrested in these riots that was had a firearm. The person had a Glock 26 on him with multiple rounds of ammunition. So why would you want to drop those charges if this is a quote-unquote peaceful protest? Of course, again, I asked this question at the top that I want you asking yourself is, who holds an emergency press conference and then doesn't take any questions? I mean, all of us that were there after this event today were sort of like, what? Like, why not just do a video statement, put it up on social media? So one of our reporters there, VNL's uh, Josh Peguero, asked Wes, hey, what's the dealio? Why aren't you taking any questions? Uh, we are not taking any questions. How come? I mean, because you're accusing yeah. the police we department. We are not taking it because it is a yeah. sensitive matter. We're working to verify the information. Uh, we've met with them. Uh, they have not been transparent at this time in sharing that information. We have open records requests that are being processed right now. So we do not want this to be viewed <laughs> as us against Fargo PD because well, we because we are close with these people. But. So we are close with these people, all right? And they, they have been. I mean, again, as I mentioned at the top of the show, the, the Fargo leaders, the Fargo PD, they've opened their arms, kind of showed these people around. Remember, they had a press conference last week, let them start the thing. I mean, gave them a lot of coverage, a lot of space, if you will. He says, we're close with these people. My question to you is, after what you've seen here based on Friday and now these major accusations today, if you're Chief Todd, if you're Mayor Mahoney, are you, are you taking the next meeting with them? I don't know. That's obviously up to them. I think it's a question to consider. Now, I want to, again, context to me in this kind of conversation is very, very important. I think the more context you have, the better decisions you can make about what you believe is happening here. So later today, the city did put out a statement regarding this press conference. Um, normally in news, we don't do this. But again, I do want to give you full context. So I'm actually going to give you the full statement from the city here that came out this afternoon, um, just so you have that for your own. Uh, maybe tough for you to read at home, so I will read it as best I can, uh, slowly but quickly, if you will. Throughout the past week, leaders from the city of Fargo, Fargo Police Department, the city of West Fargo, and city of Moore at Cass County and Fargo Public Schools engaged in successful and productive discussions with the organizers of last Friday's 
one Fargo event. These discussions were focused on issues people of color face each day in the metro and identified initial steps on a path to addressing the societal challenges. The city of Fargo and the Fargo police assisted the one Fargo group in organizing the event, including providing security and logistical assistance. Seems pretty kind to me. Leaders of the city of Fargo and the Fargo uh, PD engaged in further conversations this morning with a representative of the One Fargo Group as well as a representative of the Fargo-Moorhead Black Lives Matter chapter. Remember that, please. Ever at the representative's immediate request, today's conversation was divergent, divergent from earlier discussions with the One Fargo organizing team. It was characterized by new demands and positions that were contrary to earlier agreements. Opportunities were offered to collaborate for change, but rejected. That's important. Attendees at today's meeting also made several accusations against the Fargo Police Department. The Fargo Police Department's professional standards offers exist to investigate any submitted complaints and anyone with concerns is encouraged to utilize this avenue. Findings from the PSO reviews would typically be received and acted upon by the Chief of Police to provide additional levels of review during this unprecedented process. Any findings generated through the PSO reviews from circumstances leading up to and including the May 30th event will be received, reviewed, and acted upon by Mayor Tim Mahoney, City Administration, and the City Human Resources Office. The City of Fargo remains fully committed to facilitating further dialogue with all parties who have a true desire to work collaboratively to address racial inequities in the metro community. So, again, a lot there, but I wanted to give you that full context because this is such an important conversation. Kudos to the city that they say, hey, we still want to work with people that want to work with us. But I also like the fact they said, look, if you're going to change the rules once we get it, you know, halfway through the game, that's not really an effective strategy. I think it's also good. I did talk to Chief Todd earlier today briefly just about this statement. He says, Chris, you know, I, th I think it's good from the standpoint that, look, we want to have more eyeballs on this review, not just mine. So I think that's going to make it obviously more and more transparent. Now, one of the things you noted or I noted for you in the statement is the fact that they also said, hey, almost out of the blue, if you will, uh, the one Fargo group also wanted to have them meet with a Black Lives Matter representative. Now, I don't know who exactly that representative was from the Black Lives Matters group, but I do want to share with you one other person that was there today at Island Park just to give you some context about how things may be getting conflated now. So this is a gentleman that stood up and um, shared his identity at the press conference earlier today. Hi, my name is Jamal Abigaz. I'm uh, currently standing before you today um, as a member of the Black Lives Matter Fargo Moorhead Group. Can you spell your first and last name, please? J-A-M-A-A-L-A-B-E-G-A-Z. So there's some reporting out there about Jamal. I don't have a lot of it, uh, some of it, I should say, verified, so I'm not going to share that with you. What we do have... Uh, at least what's been reported, is that he is a member of the Red River Valley Democratic Socialists, the Red River Valley Democratic Socialists of America. So as I said at the top of the show, why hold this quote-unquote emergency press conference today, bring up these kind of accusations after such an incredible and joyful and powerful event on Friday? I don't have this that answer because, unfortunately, as you saw there, they're not taking any questions. They're not coming on the show. We, we reached out twice today to Wes to come join us tonight, and we didn't get any response, as far as I know, from producer AJ. So I only bring this up because I wanted to give you the why question initially for you to think about it. You see what's happening across the country now. L.A. is defunding the police. You've got New York City doing the same thing. Minneapolis wants to dismantle, disfund their police department. Is that part of the MO? I'm going to play this clip for you one more time because this was some of the rioters in Fargo on Saturday, May 30th, where all these accusations are coming from. Listen to the end of this clip. Is that what this thing is all about? I'm from Minneapolis. How about you? I'm from Chicago. Okay. You guys? Columbia. Okay. Fargo. How about you? Fargo. Why are you guys here? Because I'm sick of the police brutality and they're overpowered assertiveness. They act like they're better than everyone and they can do it. Make the laws just for their own good. Is there anything you guys want to say besides that? Abolish I, just, I just wish everyone would go back to peace we have to do Abolish the police. Abolish the police. Is that the end game? Is that the win that Wes talked about? I, I don't know. Again, they wouldn't take questions, but... Would love to know your point of view. Why have this amazing event on Friday, 
then come out and make these accusations on Monday when you really don't present any verifiable, credible evidence. Maybe they've got it. Maybe they will in the future. We don't know at this time. Obviously, as I've just said several times tonight, this is an important conversation. So with that being said, we want to invite you tomorrow night to join us for our Facebook Live Race Relations Roundtable. It's going to take place at 7.15 p.m. We've got a great lineup in store for you. So please mark your calendar. You can go to uh, facebook.com forward slash POV now and join us tomorrow night with some very, very special guests. All right, please share your point of view with us. You can email us, text us, leave us a voicemail. We've got much more coming up right after this.